I accidentally became a 3D printing influencer. Allow me to explain. When I started this YouTube channel, my intention was not to get free products. It was not to review every new 3D printer on the market and try to sell them to you, the viewer. I am simply a 3D printing enthusiast and somebody that works in the 3D printing industry full time. YGK3D, which is the name of my channel, is also the name of my business. I work from home and what you're seeing right now is my home studio. So trust me when I tell you that my intention with this channel was not to get free product and to tell you about how great those free products are. But as it were, a manufacturer reached out and they wanted to send me a 3D printer. So of course, I did say yes. So here I have the Kibi Tech or Chibi Tech X Smart 3. And while I accepted this printer on the basis of it being free, I also accepted it on the basis of it being very intriguing. So I have lots of Bamboo Lab X1 carbons in my 3D printing arsenal. I have eight of them that I run in my production environment to manufacture and sell products that sustains my living. This is how I make my income. The Bamboo Lab X1 carbon has been a staple of my 3D printing workflow since I backed the Kickstarter over a year ago now, I believe. And I've slowly acquired more and more of those machines. But every time I wanna buy a new one of those machines, it is a quite steep investment. Then you have a company like Chidi Tech that comes out with a very equivalent machine at a much lower price point. So this is their X Smart 3, which is part of a series of three printers. This is the smallest of the three. And all three of these are fully enclosed Core XY printers running Clipper firmware. So this is essentially an open source Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, a little bit smaller on this guy, but on the larger end of the spectrum, we have features like chamber heating that we don't see on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. And we also have a larger build volume. What intrigues me about the X Smart 3 is its size. This is actually gonna be the smallest printer I currently have in my arsenal, but because it's fully enclosed, and because of that small form factor, I'm intrigued by its portability. I've always had aspirations of taking a 3D printer camping with me. And I think this might be the printer that finally goes on its first camping trip. So let's have a closer look at the X Smart 3 while I tell you a little bit more about my journey as an up and coming 3D printing influencer, as cringy as that term may be, because maybe you wanna start documenting your 3D printing journey and sharing it with the world. So I've only been making YouTube videos for a few months now, but I've already observed a few things that I think are worth noting if you are interested in becoming a content creator in the 3D printing space in 2023. So one of the most advantageous things that I have found is that by making videos, I'm forced to understand a topic to a much more significant degree than I otherwise would. So because I'm now an educator, I need to further educate myself so I can come across as if I know what I'm talking about. So this printer here, the Chidi Tech XMR3, is running Clipper. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with Clipper by now. It is kind of the next big thing in terms of 3D printer firmware. And its main advantages over Marlin, which is still the most used 3D printer firmware, are that it can be compiled at runtime. So you can change the configuration of your firmware file and you can reboot the printer and all of your changes will be immediately implemented. As opposed to Marlin where you need to actually recompile the firmware. So that's just one of the many great advantages of Clipper. Okay, so we have the printer out of the box and we can see it's nicely wrapped in some plastic here. And I'm immediately seeing lots of instructional guides, some stickers indicating what to do, how to unbox this. And that's something that the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon does really, really well is they make the unboxing very straightforward with a bunch of helpful stickers in convenient locations. So in my short time of making YouTube videos, one thing I've observed is that it's kind of a race. I really feel the inclination to be the first one to publish information on a particular topic. Otherwise, it seems like you are late to the game and your effort in making a video may go unnoticed. Even with this printer, I know there's already been content created on it, but it's also, I think, interesting just to hear different perspectives on a topic. And my perspective on this is gonna be different than other people's perspectives. So this printer looks to be very well built. 
I like the visibility. It's got clear acrylic on the sides. So you can see right in. The visibility on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon is not nearly as good because this is a solid aluminum panel. So with this being so small and with it being fully enclosed, I think it's gonna be easy to, to take this with you. And I know for some people that sounds ridiculous, but for me, I think it'd be pretty cool to have this printer in the back of your car. You roll up the grocery store, you realize you forgot your quarters, and you go ahead and plug this into your car's AC outlet and you run off uh, a couple of cart coins and then you go about your grocery shopping. Now, I don't know what the power requirement is of this and whether or not that's feasible, but I do know that the Ford F-150 Lightning can charge an entire house. So I'm pretty sure it could run a 3D printer. So I'm seeing a dual lead screw setup with linear rods for the Z axis. We do have carbon rods for the X axis. So that has kind of become the state of the art in the industry ever since the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon came along. Carbon rods are all the rage. Um, I have seen noted in other reviews that these carbon rods are permanently affixed to the bearing blocks on either side of the gantry and therefore they could not be user service or replaced. Um, but hopefully we don't see enough wear in those uh, that they would need to be replaced, but I guess that will uh, remain to be seen. I have seen some of the other reviewers content on this printer and my first impression was that it did look a little bit cheaper, uh, less polished than the X1 Carbon. I'm not actually feeling that impression now that I'm seeing it in person. I thought it looked kind of plasticky and cheap in the other reviews, but I, I'm okay with it at this point and especially at the price point. I can't remember exactly what this one comes in at. I'll post it on the screen, but it's definitely an affordable printer, especially given the feature set. So I've never actually owned a printer by Chibi Tech before, but I know that they have been around for a while. It's not a new manufacturer. The 3D printing industry has changed dramatically from just a few short years ago, and we are getting so much more value for our money. We are getting phenomenal printers at a sub $1,000 price point, and they just continue to get better and better. And you could say that perhaps Bamboo Labs, whether or not you like them, were the reason that the industry had to kind of wake up a little bit. They really set the ball in motion and now everybody else is playing catch up. But I think there is enough different about this Kiwi Tech offering to make it interesting. And honestly, I think one of the main things is the open source nature of this printer. Interestingly, it feels like there's a filament cutter on the side of the tool head here probably for filament loading and unloading. So that's the staple of the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. It can uh, hit itself against the side of the gantry and cut the filament before it retracts, which is nice. That way you don't have a big blob on the end of your filament, causing a jam when you try to retract. So back to the topic of making YouTube videos and whether or not it's something you should do. Honestly, I think you just have to go for it. My own experience has been good. And like I said, I've learned a lot along the way. And I've met a lot of people and engaged with a lot of people that I wouldn't have otherwise connected with. Now, one thing I strive to do on this YouTube channel is to be authentic. And even though this was sent to me for free, I wanna give you my honest opinions on it. So the first thing I noticed is that it did take a little while to boot. And the other thing that I've noticed is that they seem to have forgotten to send me with a build plate. So that is quite unfortunate because it means I will not actually be able to print with this. I'm sure that the manufacturer will send me one if I request it. Okay, so the zip ties have been removed, which is what it's telling us to do on the LCD right now. So I'm gonna work through the rest of the process here and while I do that, let me tell you why I wanted to start a 3D printing YouTube channel. So I run a 3D printing business. Like I said, it is my full-time job and I really wanted to leverage my knowledge in a different way. So the audience that I normally cater to are people that want to buy my products and they don't really care whether they're 3D printed, CNC milled, injection molded. They just want a good product. But I know a lot about 3D printing and I want to be able to convey that knowledge to an audience that's interested. So by starting a YouTube channel, I'm able to kind of double dip and use my knowledge to produce product, but also use my knowledge to educate. As I continue through the commissioning here, we do need to manually set the Z offset using a leveling paper. So this uses an inductive probe instead of a nozzle probe like on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. Okay, so we have our Z offset configured. 
using this handy dandy leveling paper. And we were able to do all of that through a touch LCD, which we do not have on the Bamboo Lab P1P or on the Prusa Mark IV. We do have it on the Bamboo Lab x men Carbon, but it's nice to see a touch LCD screen on a low price 3D printer. Okay, so the next thing it says is input shaper running. So this is the other thing we don't have on a Prusa Mark IV is the ability to actually recalculate our resonances using an onboard accelerometer. So based on the fact that this is now gonna do input shaping, there's obviously an accelerometer on board. So earlier on, I alluded to the conveniences and the added value of Clipper firmware, and input shaping using an accelerometer is one of the main advantages of Clipper, in addition to that kind of on-the-fly configuration capability. As a content creator, you do need to have a glass half full approach rather than glass half empty, unless you want manufacturers to stop sending you products. So I'm inclined to review this positively, but I do want to be honest in how I do that. And you can hear that it is starting to resonate at progressively higher frequencies and it is making quite a bit of noise. So this is all completely automated. Even with a clipper based machine like a Voron or a Rat Rig, you would need to typically connect an accelerometer to the printhead, plug it into the Raspberry Pi. All of this is done for you. And so far it's quite a painless experience. So on the XSmart 3, we have a direct drive extruder. I believe we have an all metal hot end but we do not have a hardened nozzle or drive gears. So this is more of a PLA, PETG, maybe ABS machine. If you want to print carbon fiber or higher temperature materials, you might want to look for the X Plus 3 or the X Max 3, which have hardened drive gears and hardened nozzles, as well as heated chambers. So I've just removed the print head cover and I'm gonna take you guys in for a closer look. I'm being genuine when I say that I did not intend to become an influencer or, or have companies send me free product, but I'd be lying if I said that this wasn't an intentional effort to produce content. Of course, I put a lot of effort into this. There are multiple cameras rolling right now, there's lights everywhere, and I'm talking to a lens. And on the other side of that lens eventually will be you. But for now, it's just a memory card. So what I'm seeing is that the hot end is quite similar to the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. In fact, it almost looks like a carbon copy with the small heat sink cooling fan on the side. Although this does have a more traditional volcano block, including the open source standard volcano nozzle, which is actually really nice to see because then you could slap in any open source nozzle. Front face of the print head cover, we see what looks like a 5015 part cooling fan. So that should have some decent part cooling. The one thing we don't have on this printer is an auxiliary cooling fan, such as we have on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, and that's what allows us to print really, really quickly. So we don't have one by default on this printer, and I don't know if they have them on the higher end models in this lineup, but it is something you could theoretically add. And I think I saw in another video that there might even be some spare ports on this board that we could plug some accessories into. So hopefully we will see some community mods for this printer. And given that it is all open source, I think that's much more likely than on the Bamboo Lab system. So I'm just gonna grab this random roll of PLA here and we will load it in. So we do have a filament runout sensor, which is quite convenient. So we're just gonna feed it up through the back here. So we do have nice instructions for loading filament on the back of the printer. It's a four step guide. And that's pretty much a theme all around the printer is we have these little pictorial representations of what we're supposed to be doing and it should make it pretty straightforward for a beginner. Eventually you will probably want to remove these stickers so you don't look like a total noob all the time. We have these really nice video walkthrough guides showing on the LCD. So I do see some red filament oozing out of the nozzle. So that means they did test this because I'm loading white currently. So it's nice to see that there is some quality control happening here and that they've actually tested this printer before shipping it out. So if you have any questions about becoming a content creator on YouTube in 2023, I can provide what little experience I have. And if you have any questions about the Cheaty Tech XSmart 3, definitely leave them in the comments down below. And I will look forward to making a more thorough review of this printer once that build plate arrives. So my name is Taylor, this is YGK3D. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy printing.